Hello and welcome. I have had severe Mario brain rot ever since I saw the movie in theaters, and I know it's been a while, but let's be real, Jack Black has been doing nothing but being in my head, saying the word peaches all over again. So I decided now is the time to design a Princess Peach ball gown because apparently it's all I can think about. This gown will take inspiration from the Renaissance period, and by it'll take inspiration, I mean it will very broadly be based off of kind of Renaissance-ish. So really, the reason I wanted to do Renaissance for this is because Princess Peach's dress has little puffs on it, and Renaissance Italian gowns have little slash and puff details all up and down the sleeves, and that is the only reason that I decided on this era specifically, if you were curious. But I fell into a rabbit hole of research, and here's where we are now. I'm currently stuck about 3,000 miles away from my actual sewing supplies and fabric stash and everything I would actually need to make a dress, so I'm just gonna draw it for you guys and take you through the design process that comes before these dresses are made, so I, yeah, I don't like it either, but it's all I've got right now. Also, I think it might be cool to get some insight into the process before the dress actually starts its construction. But fear not, I do have plans to make this in the fall once I have access to my actual supplies. So of course step one is going to be finding a bunch of historical references, and then submersing yourself entirely into the color pink. Turn your screensavers pink, find pink pictures, paint your walls pink. Everything has to be pink before you can even think about this dress. All right, now that you're in a pink mindset, we're gonna start by drawing the figure. I have read multiple b books on drawing figures and the only thing that works is practice. Just draw people over and over again. And I can make another video later on how I draw my figures if you'd like that. Also, when drawing historical costume, the figure can change drastically based on the amount of underpinnings you have. So for instance, this lovely lady would be wearing some structured undergarment, like a pair of bodies or stays, so her torso is differently shaped as well as she would be wearing a bum roll or farthingale type thing underneath it. So the skirt's also going to be interestingly shaped, as well as the hips are going to be very puffed out. And then of course, the arms are just vague noodles because we're gonna put them in puffy sleeves anyway. Going ahead and giving my lovely lady here that classic Princess Peach heart-shaped bang, as well as the spiky bangs on the side. And then I'm filling in the rest of the hair with a lot of ringlets and braids as that is what I'm seeing a lot of in Renaissance portraiture. It has her classic Princess Peach crown. Then I go ahead and just start sketching in the shapes for what I want the sleeves for, and so I'm just planning that I want puffs around the shoulders, around the elbows, and I'm also reinforcing the shape of those with another pencil that's a little bit of a darker lead. And I'm going through and I'm outlining where I want the trim to fall along the sides of the bodice and the skirt as well. As I'm finishing up that trim, I'm then going to go in on the center of the bodice and add some little gem details that match the gems on her crown. And I honestly am very sorry about the video quality here, but I tried. And that's A, a for effort, F for everything else. I'm then going to start going in on the sleeves. Once again, apologies for the poor video quality, but I'm making sure that they're nice and tight around the forearms and the biceps, and then having those slash and puff details, or tie and puffs, around the elbows and the shoulders. I'm doing a single tie and puff at the elbows for this, and adding a little bit of that chemise peeking through at the wrist so it looks lacy and puffy. And on the shoulders, I'm going to be adding a double puff, so it'll actually be a big puff and then a slightly smaller puff below that just to really accentuate the shoulders kind of like the cartoon character has as well and then because I'm a sucker for adding so much trim I'm going to add so much trim to around the arms around the biceps forearms and then I'm going to add more details to the trim that's going up the side fronts of the dress in this case, instead of some kind of elaborate embroidery depicting flowers or something else like that, I am going to be doing our little toads from Mario. And I think that these are so sweet and they were my favorite part of drawing. Okay, so now that we've got our sketch in, I'm just going over it with a fountain pen and putting in all our dark black lines. Usually I can go with a black and white sketch and I will just use this. My favorite pen for drawing these is my fountain pen. It takes a little bit of getting used to because it does give ink very easily and is easy to have a spill, but I enjoy it nonetheless and it makes very interesting lines. 
I also find that my fountain pen does really well interacting with most mediums. I'm gonna use watercolor on top of this and it's gonna go horribly for a little bit because I used a fountain pen instead of a pen that doesn't bleed. But be warned, fountain pens do bleed of course, um, unless you give the ink like three days to settle. I gave it maybe 10 minutes. So there's a bit of a mishap later in the video with that, but to be entirely honest, I'm not mad about it and I'm still happy with the way the drawing came out and ooh, look at that line. <sighs> this was my favorite part of like the penning process is just pulling really long lines. It's either my favorite or my least favorite part because when it goes well, it is possibly one of the most satisfying things and when it goes horribly, I want to crumple up everything I just made and then break my pen in two. Also, as I'm doing with these little toad characters here, when you go over in pen, you can add a lot more or subtract a lot more than the pencil that you were doing. And this is just a nice refinement process, I find, because there's almost a little bit of stress behind the, oh my gosh, it's pen. If I mess up, this is it. And so I think that definitely helps in the decision-making process to just solidify things. Now I'm just going to go over it with my eraser, get rid of all the pencil marks, get rid of all those eraser shavings, and it's color time! Starting off with the bright red, we're doing the gems along the center of the bodice and the top of the crown, and then also our little toad friends down the trim on the front. Then going in with the blue, once again, this is really just the gems uh, along the top of the crown and the bodice, and then also a little necklace that I decided to give her last minute. And then we go in with our yellow and gold. The trim that I'm imagining is a sort of a gold trim. I just wanna give it a little sparkle here and there. So I'm going ahead and making every piece of trim and extra bits on this dress shiny and gold since the rest of it is going to be a very matte pink. Also, for anyone curious, I am using watercolor pencils. Even if I don't use them with water, I do like to use watercolor pencils because they don't have a lot of wax in them. Most colored pencils will have wax as a main ingredient and it can give a shiny finish to your drawings. And I really don't enjoy that and the way it interacts with light. So I prefer to go for a watercolor pencil as it gives a much nicer finish towards the end product. And now I'm just going through with a lighter shade of yellow, that way there's a little bit of dimension in the drawing, and this honestly might not do much visually, but I think it helps. All right, now we're going in with the pink and purple. Because Princess Peach is all pink, and I wanna make sure that there are different shades of the pink, I'm going in with a purple color first and doing a very light wash over the outer dress and bodice. And then for the underskirt, I am going to be going in with a very like light bubblegum baby pink. All right, there is that under bodice and underskirt color that we're putting in. Like I said, a very light bubblegum baby pink. And then I'm also going to be adding that pink over the outer dress as well, just so that it is still pink and not just purple. That's another thing about the watercolor pencils that I really like is they blend with each other very, very well if you're not patient. You can blend any colored pencils if you're patient, but I am not. I'm looking to get a quick drawing out. That way I can immediately start on the project. I'm also going in with a little bit of that bright red just to liven up some of the edges of this pink color. And then I am going in with my water. I'm first testing on the sides just to see how much water is going to activate these pencils. And I recommend you always do this so you don't end up with puddles. And then I started watercoloring in my pencils. They would be fine dry, but I decided I want the color to be a bit more intense. And with watercolors, intensity definitely comes once you wet it. Here is the part where I messed up. I added a little too much water when I was brushing and it made my ink bleed, so now her hair is a little black. But it's the hair, it's not the dress, so I am okay with that mistake. I definitely made sure to change brush sizes a couple times and keep rinsing because it was definitely important to me that I don't muddy the colors as I'm going through this. And this is the moment that I realized I had been dipping my paintbrushes into my soda instead of my paint water and drinking the soda. So on that note, we're gonna sign this off, finish the drawing, and get towards the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm on Patreon, TikTok, Instagram, all under Art by LGO. 
I want to give a special shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot and allows me to do what I do. Greatly appreciate a like and subscribe, maybe even a comment. And also, I just wanted to say thank you and have a lovely day. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.